Astronomical magnitudes are a traditional measure of flux or luminosity of astronomical objects um, that date back to the ancient Greeks and are still used today. What the ancient Greeks did, uh, ancient Greek astronomers, was rank stars uh, from a magnitude of one, which were the brightest, to a magnitude of six, which was the dimmest that they were able to see uh, with the unaided eye. In the 18th century, this traditional scale for measuring brightnesses of stars um, was put on a more empirical footing. Um, and it was defined that the difference in magnitude between two stars uh, of different fluxes, of different measured fluxes, is equal to two and a half times the log of the ratio of their fluxes. And this is the fundamental equation explaining what magnitudes are relative to fluxes. It's a consequence of um, the logarithmic or approximately log log the logarithmic sensitivity of your eye. Um, if you want to define an absolute uh, or a calibrated apparent magnitude, um, you have to pick uh, the zero point of the scale. Uh, one of the most traditional uh, calibrations is to define magnitude zero as the magnitude of the star Vega, which is a very bright star. This is the apparent magnitude, the measured magnitude, or the observed magnitude. Um, and we traditionally use little m for that. We can also define an absolute magnitude. <laughs> uh, which is the magnitude of the object if it is at 10 uh, parsecs. So magnitude of an object at a fixed distance of 10 parsecs. And we typically use capital M uh, for absolute magnitude. Now to our boxed equation for the difference. So as you know, um, the inverse square law says that the observed flux of an object uh, with a luminosity, L, is equal to L divided by 4 pi times the distance squared. So let's say we have an object at a distance d from us. Uh, the flux that we observe from this object will be equal to its luminosity divided by 4 pi d squared. Now let us imagine if that the object is, is at a distance of 10 parsecs. Um, if that were the case, the flux that we would observe from that object would be equal to L divided by 4 pi 10 squared, because it's at 10 parsecs. And we're going to use the distance in parsecs here. Um, it'll turn out not to matter exactly, um, so just bear with me. Going between two magnitudes, we can rewrite this as the observed magnitude. Um, so this is going to correspond to the observed magnitude minus the apparent magnitude, this corresponds to the apparent magnitude, is going to be equal to two and a half log the flux ratio. And if we put in what we have um, just previously written down for what these fluxes are relative to the luminosity of our object, this is going to be the luminosity over four pi times a hundred, and then we've got a four pi d squared over the luminosity, and a bunch of things cancel. So the L's cancel and the four pi's, and we're left with m minus m. Ha, huh, I forgot the two and a half log, sorry. Two and a half times the log of all of that, right? And so then we're, we're left with two and a half times the log d squared over 100. And if you do a bit of log uh, rearrangement to simplify things, this will end up being five log d minus five which is another really commonly remembered relationship between absolute and apparent magnitude and the distance in parsecs. Finally, it's useful to know that the magnitude of the sun, the absolute magnitude of the sun, is 4.8. This is the absolute magnitude of the sun. So if we put that into our equation for the difference between two magnitudes, the absolute magnitude of a star minus the absolute magnitude of the sun is going to be two and a half 
times the log of the luminosity of the sun divided by the luminosity of the star. Or if we rearrange uh, into more useful order, the magnitude of a star, the absolute magnitude of a star, is 4.8 minus 2.5 times the log of the luminosity of the star as measured in solar luminosities. Another useful one. So magnitudes are a little bit annoying in astronomy. They're a little bit of an unusual unit scale. They're backwards. Bigger magnitudes are fainter things. Catch catches people out all the time. But they're uh, routinely used right across astronomy. And so it's important that you know what they are and how to convert them into more traditional luminosity units.